Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the European Nightcrawler only bins. These are the European Nightcrawlers that I got my cocoons from Emily, the crazy worm lady. So let's take a look in on them and see what they've got for food. Oop, I think I might have already struck on it. Did not review the old videos. But I found something squishy. Smells like limes. Or apple. Looks more like apple. And this bin seems a little wet. Carrots are not really doing anything but trying to grow. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to leave the lid off of this one. It's kind of teetering into too wet. At least too wet for how I prefer to run things. Ooh, I think I've interrupted. Uh-oh. Yes, I, I did interrupt them. Sorry, little buddies. Well, that sucks. Well, I'm sure they'll figure out how to get back there. And here is a reasonably freshly laid cocoon. So I don't think they're having any trouble finding each other in this bin. And here's another cocoon. And another cocoon. I remember, well, and another cocoon. I remember when I couldn't find cocoons for love or money. Luckily, the, the population has figured it out, and oh, look at that. Avocado with a cocoon. The cocoons are just going nuts. Look at that. Happy spring. All kinds of cocoons. Yeah, I'm just going to dig around and see if there's any of the other food. I'm not kidding you guys. Cocoon. Again. Nuts. I mean, it's good, but wow. I don't normally see that many. Yep. Oh, there's a big one. Well, oh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Look at that. That's pretty huge. Really huge. Yeah, I have to wonder if the size of the cocoon has something to do with the size of the worm that produced it. Uh, if anybody has read anything and knows, uh, put that down in the, the comment sections. Another cocoon. But I do have some pretty good sized you know, worms in here. Nothing like these worms, geez. Her European night crawlers are monsters. It's almost like the, what are the Belfast worm group. They used to have some crazy big European night crawlers. Now this one, this one looks like it's about ready to hatch. It's starting to get a little pokey thing on the outside. But I'm not kidding, like the cocoons are everywhere. So they are, must be very, very happy worms to be producing so many cocoons that I can't get one handful without seeing a cocoon. And there's another one right there. And then here's a smallish one. Probably not the worm it came from, but here's a really small one. Isn't that weird? Like some of them are just huge and some of them are itty bitty tiny. That's why when I sift the, the castings, you never know if you're going to catch them all or not. Here's a, a cocoon that is either, it feels like it's still full, but it's got to be very close to um, hatching as dark as it is. Let me see if I can grab one of the... You can see the difference between the dark cocoon over here and this very pale cocoon here. They get darker as they age. So in the couple of weeks or what have you that it takes for them from the point where they were created till when they hatch, they get darker and darker. And I honestly don't know if that's internal or if it's because they're being exposed to the castings 
from the adults. I don't know. So still looking to see if they've got enough food here. I wish I had started counting the cocoons as I've been pulling them out. I think if I wanted to sell cocoons at this point, I would definitely... If I had the time to pick them out, I would certainly have enough to do it. Probably could start a new bin. Here's another freshly laid cocoon. You can see it's teardrop shaped. They tend to get more round as they get older. Now if you see anything that looks like this, this is not a worm cocoon. This is you putting your old plant material in here, and this is a fertilizer ball. Not a worm cocoon. Uh, worm cocoons, no matter what stage they are and what color they are, are always uh, translucent. But yep, so I think, I think I will go ahead and give them a little bit more food. Um, especially if they are breeding like this. Uh, if there's going to be a, a ton of worms, new worms, in a couple of weeks, I don't want to short them in case I don't get around to feeding them exactly on schedule. So I think I'm going to give them a little bit of worm goo here. Not a lot because they do have some of the citrus and the carrots. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give them a little bit. So just a tiny little bit, and I don't know if they need a lot of calcium for cocoons, like, you know, like chickens need calcium to make cocoons. I don't know if it's the same. Again, if you know these things, put this down there. It makes sense, but I've not read anything that says that exactly. So let me get these guys covered back up, and I'll move you down to the other European nightcrawler bin that has more surface area. Okay, bin number two. This is the one with all of the surface area. And looking at everything on top here, it looks like they're making some nice big castings for me. Alright, here's a cocoon here. I'm seeing a lot of springtails again. There's another cocoon. Let's peel in this corner. The, okay, here we got a little bit of a worm ball. This is where the citrus was last week. Or it's actually been more than a week. I'll have to go back and look exactly, but it's been maybe two weeks. With the temperatures being low, they don't feed as heavily, and so I don't always um, check on them every single week in a situation where I know there's where I fed them up pretty good but these guys do seem to be bigger um, so you know sort of doing an experiment sort of not really not really keeping track other than the fact that there are some worms that are just flipping huge in here um, but, you know, everybody says if they have more surface area, that the worms themselves will get bigger, as opposed to having them in a vertical volume bin, like you saw earlier. But there is definitely good size worms in here, and I did not see the other bin having that size of worms. So we might be getting somewhere with that theory, with this, uh, the bin that is the same five gallons, only it's just not vertical, it's horizontal. So it looks like we still have some of the slower food going on here, the onions and carrots, and I'll just throw that back. These guys look like they could actually use a little bit more food. And put all the other food that I'm finding back in this corner. The tea bag strings do take quite a long time to break up, longer than the tea bag itself. 
so they do break down. They're not synthetic. They are cotton, but um, they are not as quick. And here's the darn springtails again. Alright, I'm going to put some apple goo down at the opposite end of the bin, and, or at the middle of the bin. Make sure they keep going until the next time. A little bit of crab apples, and some grit. Alrighty. And there we go, as the closing picture of the group, there are worms that are procreating. I don't know if I can get a very good close picture of that, but I think you can actually see the cocoon band, or the mucus band in between the worms, right there, where they're attached to each other. And you just saw it slip out from over here. I know, I'm pestering you, I'm sorry, but it's for science. All right, and here's another cocoon, almost green when they're brand new. All right, guys, well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.